Hi, my name is Ali Shersova and in this video we're going to talk about how a buck converter works and why would you use a buck converter instead of, for example, an LDO or a Zener regulator. So uh, if you're a power supply designer, then you have to change from one voltage to another voltage all the time. Let us for simplicity say that we have 10 volts available to us, but in fact we need 5 volts for whatever circuit that we are designing. Um, the simplest way of doing it would be to take two resistors, create a potential divider, if you make that 1 kilo ohms and this one 1 kilo ohms, and then in theory you get 5 volts here. Uh, and you will use that. Of course, this only works if you have got very little current. Let's say you need a signal level for a, 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 for a chip, maybe one milliamp, two milliamps maximum. If you're trying to draw any more current, uh, any real current out of this, this circuit in fact will not work. Uh, let us for simplicity say that we need one amp instead of a few milliamps. There we go. If I have a five ohm resistor in order to give me one amps, you can clearly see that the voltage here is going to collapse. And the reason is that this five amp, uh, five ohms will appear with this one kilo ohm. And therefore, this is not a one kilo ohm anymore, it's something a little bit less than five, ohm, five ohms. Um, and we can say, okay, in order to make sure that this voltage doesn't collapse, I'm going to replace this with half an ohm here and another half an ohm there and that way half an ohm in parallel with five ohm is still around half an ohm and therefore this voltage will not collapse but have a look to see what happens to the power losses you've got 10 volts here you've got a grand total of one ohms of resistance and therefore 10 amps is going to flow down here and of course that is not acceptable because the power losses will be huge an alternative to this circuit is to use a zener so if I remove this resistor there and I replace it with a Zener diode, let's say I select a Zener that has got a uh, breakdown voltage of around uh, 5 volts. Now, this circuit will uh, perform slightly better uh, um, in that you can draw a little bit more current. The, the Zener is being operated in the breakdown region. And let us say for simplicity that the minimum amount of current that you have, you have to pass through the Zener to keep it in the breakdown region is 100 milliamps. In reality, it's actually much smaller than that. This is just for the simplicity of teaching. In order for this Zener to work in the breakdown region, you have to pass a minimum amount of current through it. For simplicity, we're saying this 100 uh, milliamps. Again, here I've got 5 volts and 5 ohms, so I've got 1 amps. So the grand total current that is going to be flowing from my source to be divided down so that I can get my 5 volts there, it's going to be 1.1 amps. You can immediately see that again we have got a power loss issue. The voltage at this point is 10 volts, the voltage at this point is 5 volts, therefore the potential difference between that and that is um, 5 volts. You've got 1 amps flowing, this resistor will be extremely lossy. Um, and, um, and again you're burning off the energy in order to, to, to create this 5 volts from that 10 volts. Then a third alternative is to use an LDO. Now, an LDO is a little bit like a variable resistance. This is again for simplicity of teaching. Let us draw it in very simplified form as a variable resistor, like that. And let us say that we connect this wiper of the variable resistor to my load. Again, I've got five ohms here. 5 volts there. I stress in reality it's not a variable resistor, in fact it's, the, it's a transistor that we are controlling in the linear region in, uh, and uh, however I am showing it for simplicity of teaching as a resistor. So I've got a transistor that I'm controlling and effectively I am measuring the input voltage and I control the transistor and I measure the output voltage, I also control the transistor so that it is hovering up and down in the linear region in order to make this 5 volts constant. So as you vary the load, if the load changes or the line changes, this 5 volt remains at 5 volts. Okay, so this has got the advantage 
that I have got load regulation and line regulation, but again, I am dissipating energy as heat in this effectively what we forcing the, the, uh, the transistor to, to act like a bit of a variable resistor. Um, so all of these schemes that I discussed have got several problems. Either the voltage will collapse or the power losses will be very, very high. So switch mode power supplies, and in particular the buck converter, work in a completely different way. They work on the principle of turning off the input power for a period of time and then turning it back on again. Imagine you have got a light bulb. If you've got a light bulb and you turn it off for 50% of the time and turn it back on for 50% of the time, and then you could somehow filter the light so that those flicker could not be seen, the brightness of that light bulb will be half of what would have been if you had turned it on all the time. So what I'm saying is, let us say that I get a switch and I get my load. In my case, I said it was a light bulb, right? It doesn't have to be. And I turn this switch on and off. I turn it on for 50% of the time and I turn it so I turn, I beg your pardon, I turn it on for 50%, I turn it off for 50%, and I look at brightness of a light bulb at this point or the voltage at this point. So here is 10 volts, and here is 10 volts chopped. As with a light bulb, if you do it very, very slowly, of course you will see the flicker. If you do it faster, you will see less flicker. So let us say that we turn it on and off, at a rate of 100 times per second, so that would be 100 kilohertz. So you've got this waveform, it's on for 50%, it's off for 50%, and the switching frequency, how fast you're turning it on and off, is 100 kilohertz. I don't want these sharp edges at this end, I need a solid five volts. At the moment, I've got 10 volts here, and then I've got zero volts there. In order to get five volts, in electronics, we use a filter, don't we? So what we do is we put an inductor there, right? And then put a capacitor there. And that will give me a certain amount of filtering. In theory, if I get a inductor capacitor LC filter with a low enough um, a cutoff frequency, then this filter will average out my 10 volts. And what I will see here will be 5 volts because this will be averaged out. So we go maybe have a little bit of ripple, come down, come up, come down, and so on. In reality, if you do this, it will blow up as soon as you try to turn that switch off. And the reason is the back EMF of the inductor. Because, as we have shown in some of our previous videos, when a current is flowing in the inductor, if you try, let's call this IL, if you try to interrupt the flow of this current, the inductor will form a back EMF in order to force the current to continue going in that way. And of course, if you do not put an alternative path for this, then this back EMF will get bigger and bigger and bigger until something blows up. So we have to put an alternative path, right? And we do that by placing a diode right there. So when you turn the switch on, the current goes this way, through the inductor, when, the when you turn the switch off, the current will go here through the inductor. So the current through the inductor is flowing all the time. This is acting like a filter, and therefore if you had a duty of 50%, so you're turning it on for 50% of the time and off for 50% of the time, your voltage will fall from 10 volts to 5 volts. Of course, you don't have to have a duty of 50%. If you have a duty of 10%, so you turn it on, for 10% of the time, and you turn it off for 90% of the time, then with an input voltage of 10 volts, you are only delivering energy for 10% of the time, you are filtering this flicker, and you end up with 1 volts. 10 volts will step down to 1 volts because your duty is 10%. If you do it the other way around, so you keep the switch on for 90% of the time, and off for 10% of the time, then your 10 volts will fall down to 9 volts. The most important part 
is that not only you are getting the voltage that you want and you can have effectively whatever voltage that is lower than 10 volts by varying the duty, but because you're not burning off the excess energy in order to reduce your voltage, you are just turning it off for a, a, a controlled amount of time, your losses will be very, very small compared to, let's say, an LDO. The amount of losses that you have will be certain amount of conduction losses and certain amount of switching losses. And of course, we will talk about all of these in the, the online workshop uh, that this is an introduction to. I hope you enjoyed the video and now we can go and carry on with the rest of the workshop.